As we come on the air this morning, the White House has a message for congressional Republicans. It's time to move on. That's what the White House counsel is now telling Speaker Mike Johnson in an unprecedented letter, calling for him to drop the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. And coincidentally, Biden's top critics may already be looking for off-ramps. Joining us now in D.C., staff writer for The Atlantic and MSNBC contributor McKay Coppins. And here with me, MSNBC political analyst and Democratic pollster Fernand Amandi. Welcome to you both. Good to have all you guys here. So, McKay, 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 how, uh, how do we assess um, this, I, I think, this very kind of different play by the White House to sort of push back up on the Speaker of the House uh, and say, hey, can you guys, like, settle down and start the nation's business? I want to pull up a, uh, the quote from the counsel, uh, Ed Sickle, a letter to Speaker Johnson, quote, I write you today because it is clear the House Republican impeachment is over. The House majority ought to work with the president on our economy, national security, and other important priorities on behalf of the American people, not continue to waste time on pol political stunts like this. I loved it. I, it was sort of a redirectional kind of conversation to get everybody focused on the nation's business. What are you hearing on the Hill in response to the White House kind of push up against the speaker? Well, I think the White House smelled blood in the water, right? They saw that Republicans were losing their will to continue with this. And I mean, you talk to Republicans on the Hill, they know that this is over, right? And, and a lot of them knew it was a farce from the beginning, but they were going along with it. We'll see what, what we can dredge up. It was a, it was a fishing expedition, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted to hurt President Biden during an election year. But their star witness has fallen apart. The, the, the <laughs> fallen apart, the, to the, say the least. The, the, impeachment, <laughs> the, the impeachment crusade has fallen apart in pretty embarrassing fashion. And I think that's why you see people like Ken Buck just kind of, you know, completely demoralized. By all accounts, the House conference especially is demoralized, embarrassed. You see Republicans rushing for the exits. They want to retire. They want to leave. Um, and I think that the White House saw that, and that's why you saw that letter. But they knew they had no evidence, Simone. There was, there was never any, any, any evidence whatsoever. For not, there was, there was never any evidence. I'm just, I'm just hard pressed to believe that. There was a strategy here. Uh, Speaker Mike Johnson now is not even, he does, even Mike Johnson doesn't want to talk about impeachment. Like, uh, the New Republic, <laughs> the, the headline is, even Mike Johnson doesn't want to talk about Biden impeachment anymore. And I mean, he did insist for more than a year that the president and his family were guilty of corruption. But after months and months and months of investigations, lots of our tax dollars wasted, now we're at the point where you got James Comer talking about, the chairman of the Oversight Committee, well, we really just need to make some criminal referrals to DOJ. What does accountability look like? It looks like criminal referrals. It looks like referring people to the Department of Justice. And uh, if Merrick Garland's Department of Justice won't take uh, any potential criminal referrals seriously, then maybe the next president uh, with a new attorney general will. Fernand. Listen, um, you know, they're waiting, I think, for President Biden to wear the tan suit on Monday so that they can start the uh, impeachment proceedings on the tan suit. Clearly, the uh, criminal charges uh, are not working. But look, this is nothing more than the political weaponization of impeachment. It's like an Oprah episode. Trump got impeached. Now the Republicans say there were Democrats got to get impeached. I want an impeachment. He wants an impeachment. There is no standing here. This is eroding them in the polls. It's leading to the loss of the Republican majority, which if they continue on this track, I can see Speaker Hakeem Jeffries taking the gavel very soon here. Uh, it's a political disaster, but they're here serving at the whims of Donald Trump, who is insisting that this impeachment inquiry continue. And and if this one doesn't go, they're going to drum up another one because the idea is to try and disqualify the president in the public's mind between now and November. That's what this is all about. There's no merit. There is no legal standing. There are no legitimate criminal charges. It's about trying to embarrass Joe Biden. Uh, agreed. And that is what it has always been about. And I wonder what you make of the jujitsu that the White House is doing where they're saying you're wasting our time. Right. It's not just about the fact that you have abused the office you hold, that you have weaponized impeachment, that you've gone after this with absolutely no merit. It's also about the fact that, like, you should really be focused on the myriad issues, the affordability crisis, the housing crisis that's facing Americans. Do you think that lands? 
Look, I think the, I think the White House tried to go about this in the proper way. They cooperated with all of the components of the impeachment. But now it's time to shift gears, Alicia. Yep. They need to call this for what it is. This is the Republicans who are unserious about governing or unserious about tackling the issues of America and playing politics with the most sacred of things in government, which is to impeach a president and say enough is enough. Go on the offense here as opposed to being on the defense and be aggressive and bullish, because that's going to be what the Republicans are going to keep trying to do every single day between now and the election in November. If if they don't get tough, the Republicans are going to smell that weakness and keep pushing these absurd impeachment rituals. McKay, on the other side of Cray Cray Town, you had... Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Cray Cray Town. Cray Cray Town, yeah. <laughs> on the other side of Cray Cray Town, you have uh, NBC, NBC News reporting that Hunter Biden has declined. Uh, that very special invitation to uh, publicly testify, mm. noting uh, Mr. Biden declines your invitation to this carnival sideshow, his lawyer uh, Abe Law, uh, Law said, uh, in a letter to the House Oversight uh, Committee Comer, uh, Chair Comer. How is that narrative now uh, going to set itself up? Y you had Hunter Biden do, one, the, the dramatic entry, entrance when no one thought he would show up. He did. Then, two, OK, I'll sit down in, in the quiet of the chambers with just the members and have the conversation. And now, three, say, OK, no more. We're done. What, what do you see playing out here as impeachment is imploded? Looks like the Hunter Biden thing has imploded as well. Yeah, I mean, look, it's funny because for, I mean, how many, are we in year five at this point of yeah. Republicans <laughs> trying to turn Hunter Biden into the political <laughs> cudgel they can use to, you know, finally beat Biden? And it hasn't worked. I mean, it, and it's funny, you talk to Republicans, I was talking to one uh, Republican in Congress uh, a while ago who was saying, you know, I, it, it seems like Hunter Biden did a lot of bad stuff, and I, I don't know that much about it. He has, you know, seems to have shady business dealings. But having a ne'er-do-well son is not an impeachable offense. It's not a crime. And there have never been a successful attempt to establish a connection between Hunter Biden's behavior and the president. And that's all that really matters when it comes to the, the House and Congress, right. right? And I think that what we're seeing is, again, is kind of a united front from the Biden White House, from his Justice Department, from the uh, from Hunter Biden as well, basically saying that, that we're, we're done playing along, right? We've humored you. You haven't found anything. We are ready to move on, and you need to move on, too. You know, it's so um, crazy, I guess, <laughs> because there have only... I mean, we talk about this often, and I think we should always remind people that there have only ever been five presidential impeachment inquiries in the yeah. history of this Congress. Joe Biden was the fifth, mm -hmm. and this is not something that should be taken lightly, but at, at this point, it seems like it's political games. Is, is this why there are record retirements happening from this House of Representatives? I mean, you you wrote a, a very good book mm -hmm. uh, in conversations with Mitt Romney, Senator Romney, about his retirement, why he no longer wants to be in Congress. It feels like these people are unwilling to some people within the Republican Party apparatus don't want to play these games anymore. Yeah, and again, I, I go back to, to uh, Republican Congressman Ken Buck, who mm -hmm. said, you know, th they have turned the impeachment into a social media sideshow. It's th it's supposed to be something very serious. It's in the Constitution. It's something that the Congress undertakes when there is serious evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors by the president. Now it is clearly, I mean, I don't think any serious Republican can say at this point that this is anything other than performative partisanship, right? right? And I do think that's why you're seeing serious minded Republicans like Mitt Romney, like Ken Buck, who are saying, I, I just can't do this anymore. Well, mm -hmm. therein lies the oxymoron, serious Republicans. But Alicia, I, I defer to you on that. <laughs> Well, well, here's the thing. We keep talking about off-ramps to impeachment. One of the things I want to be clear on for is those off-ramps come with their own dangers, both politically for Republicans in terms of just how long shot all of the things that they're talking about are. They understandably want something they can sell to their anti-Biden voters. This is about politics. But it does set up a roadmap. Should there be a second Trump term for him to have a way to prosecute his his former rivals. And that that is the part that is dangerous, right? Like, the impeachment was always dangerous because it was a sham. But the possibility of a second Trump term where he has a Congress willing to do his bidding, and as we know, he will install a bunch of loyalists, and then go after President Biden for 
crimes that do not exist, that's that's the danger to democracy. I mean, it is, but this has been the Republican playbook now for several cycles. Remember, the prosecution, so to speak, or the impeachment that they wish was of Hillary Clinton over Benghazi, baseless, shameless, came to nothing. However, there was a political win for them. Right. In their belief, they feel like those uh, Benghazi hearings damaged Hillary Clinton enough to help Donald Trump win the presidency. Remember also Trump's own words. He has said he plans on using the Justice Department under a Trump administration as his personal prosecu prosecutorial tool. He is going to be a day one dictator. So I think it's just consistent with yes. the approaches of the Republicans we've seen over the last eight years. Consistent in the danger.